we have here the container, yeah, and it's filled with it fills with water. And that's our stone in the middle. Now, if, this, if the water are hot around here, quite hot, yes, red means hot, what would eventually happen to the temperature of the, of the stone? It will heat, yeah? Because heat transfer into the stone. Now, I want to show, I want to denote two areas in the stones, and they're quite subjective. First of all, I would like to have an area that I'll call the core. Yeah? So the core is the center of the stone. And the skin of the stone. Yeah, because once it comes into the treatment, it makes sense to understand it this way. So after a while, the core and the skin of the stone, the, the superficial and the deeper area of the stone, would all be same temperature. And this temperature could be up to 70 degrees, even 80 degrees, even 90 degrees. It's too hot to treat it. Okay, now, what are we going to do next? Are we going to apply this stone right into the body? No. Cold water. We have in hand, we're taking this stone and pop it into the bowl of cold water, right? Uh, the stone can be there for, in 20 minutes it will be quite ready. Yeah, 20 minutes. Uh, in my practice what I do, I put it into a boiling water. So I add boiling water and then it's very quickly. Yeah? Utkash, yeah. can you see that um, I'm actually, uh, that the camera sees me? Yeah? Do you see that there? Yeah? Fantastic, good. So, it would take, if you're putting in the slow cooker a boiling water, although it's not recommended by the manufacturer, I've done it for now about 11 years, and no problem. It doesn't crack, it does not break. I have in my practice downstairs a um, um, tea kettle. I boil the water, put it in, 20 minutes, it's quite ready. 20 minutes with it? Yeah, because they, they, it absorbs, they don't absorb a lot of heat. Yeah? Okay, now I take the stone and drop it into the cold water. Yeah? This is the core and that's the skin. Now, what would happen when I drop the this, this stone into cold water? Is all the stone inside and outside are going to drop in the temperature the same way? So what would be colder first? Skin. The skin. Right. So here, the core would be a lot hotter, and the skin, not that hot, because all the heat goes outside to the cold water. Now, if you leave it too long, also the core would get cool. Yeah? Makes sense, right? So, we have to know how much time to keep it. It's a matter of seconds to get the temperature to the right, to the right temperature. So it doesn't take a minute even, it takes maybe 10 seconds to drop the, the stones into the cold water and then have it in the right temperature. Now how do we check it? No equipment. We just check it with our hand. We drop this, the stone into the cold water. We now take the stones from it. This is the cold water. We lift it and we count to three. One, two, three. If by then our hand can sustain the heat, it's all right. 
and then we can go into the into the body yeah of our client so far so good yeah because next comes another layer and that's what happened in this in the body now we're taking this stone and we have our nice this is the uh, client skin and what we can put then underneath is say a muscle and then we have also some blood supply here right so this would be blood and there is fascia and our organs and bones but then we are bringing the stone right onto the skin just as a reminder is the core hotter than the skin still yeah because we brought it from the cold water right so the core would be quite hot and the skin not that hot but what would happen to the temperature of the skin is quite interesting the, it's like the earth you know the core is very hot so it would try to get the heat into the skin so there is always an gradients of temperature from the core into the skin and onto the body's climate yeah so all the time the temperature would move into the skin and then from the skin into the client's body that's how it moves because that area the skin is always a bit cooler and in nature things wants to get balanced so if you have the stone onto the skin and you don't move it what would happen then they get too hot if you move the stones every time you move the stone there is a new area that would be getting hotter so now this area would get hotter and this area get hotter but this one wouldn't because the stone is already not here so you're actually smearing the heat onto the body if you stop you burn them if you keep moving it's all fine it's all fine if you leave the stone the stone needs to be quite colder that's what I'm saying that you come to a real hot stone massage course not to those stones that you just leaving on the body they cannot be hot because you will burn the client so therapeutically this works much better but we have to be careful we have to be careful we have to be um, responsible to what we do so far never a problem because here comes the the last bit is that we never leave the stones unattended we always have our hand with the stone so this would be just the therapist Um, and okay this is the therapist hand now listen to that and I'll repeat it twice if you need you hold the stone this is your client back okay you are now moving the stone so every time there is a new place that 
your client's body absorb the heat, isn't it? You're moving it. But what is not moving is your hands on the stone. So which one tend to be hotter, the client's or your hands? Exactly. That's, that's the reason that you keep your hands as a safety balance to the heat. You feel the heat much more than they do. You never leave it unattended, but you just continuously moving. Once you feel it's too hot, you, what you do is that you're flipping the stone. And I'll tell you why. If, let's look at the two surfaces. The surface between the stone and the client, this the one, and the top surface between you, uh, your hand and, your, and the stone. Yeah? If you're smearing the heat on the client's back, the lower surface lose heat a lot more. So it's always a bit cooler. Your surface, the top surface of the stones, it's always warmer. Why? Because it gets the heat into your hand, the hand gets hotter, and you're feeling too hot. That's why the first technique that we learn called flip and glide. That's really the reason we do the flipping, because you would feel that your hand's contact with the stone is too hot, you're flipping it, and then you can do it again. Yeah? And then you're thinking, oh, my hand is too hot, you're flipping it, and then you continue. That's the way you can apply quite hot stones without getting any problem.